I am recording now, and we are excited to start this first happy hour with uh, Richard Belote. Uh, he teaches statistics and is a nuclear physicist. He played on boats that had great big reactors on them. Uh, and uh, he now teaches statistics for Reinhardt. And we're going to learn a lot about how to customize Hawk's uh, learning um, presentations, presentations that come with it. And um, we're going to customize them so that they do exactly what we want them to do. And with that, let me admit Lydia. Uh, I turn it over to you, Richard, and you are now the host. All right. Well, happy, happy hour to everybody. Very, very good. I love it. And uh, how you doing, Lydia? Welcome aboard. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, get back to something a little bit more academic or academically oriented. All right. Uh, today, uh, really, I just want to go over about three things with you, all dealing with how to edit the learn modules in Hawks Learning. Uh, there's actually some more customization that can be done, and I'll mention out how we can do that as we get through it. But I want to show you how to hide a page, how to edit a page, and how to incorporate videos directly into the Hawks lessons so that uh, you can enhance the, uh, the lectures. And I'll show you how I have done that in a couple of cases, really more for your benefit right now, but I have actually been in and edited several of the lecture uh, sections in Hawks. So what I'd like to do, if I can, there we go, share screen. I want to share my Hawks. So you should all see the Hawks Teach module. And those of you who are familiar with Hawks will know that this is your first screen that you'll see when you sign in. And you go ahead and sign in. And since I have multiple courses, I'll select the course that I'm going to edit, which is my statistics class for purposes of today. So once I've done that, I'm now going to select assignments because uh, what we're actually going to do is edit the curriculum. And we scroll down under assignments to curriculum. And this is the first important point to note is that you cannot edit. If your curriculum is set as the default curriculum, what I'm about ready to say doesn't apply because you're not allowed to edit the default curriculum. So you have to have converted the default or copied the default into your own curriculum, which as you can see, I have. And so I will select that curriculum and this lists all of the courses or all of the uh, lessons inside of Hawks. And I'm going to scroll down here to the one that I'd like to edit today, which is 6.3, finding probability using a normal distribution. So I click on my lecture title and the first thing I'm brought to is actually the lesson builder where we have a question bank on the left side and, and the assignments on the right side. The assignments on the right side are actually the problems that they will be working inside the, the one of the three modules. And I'll show you what those modules look like. In fact, I should do that right now. Uh, this is 6.3, what it would look like if you were coming at it as a student, you would find three modules the learn, practice, and certify. And the learn module is what we're going to edit today. But in the lesson builder that I was just at, you will actually be able to change these questions in the practice, as well as in the certify modules to emphasize or de-emphasize whatever topics you have that you would like to uh, use. So, but we're not gonna do any of that today. Um, that would be a topic for another day. And what we do is we go over here to this gear icon and we want to open learn, open the learn module. And you'll see this is what you get. If I were to go in over here to my student module and click on the learn module, whoops, uh, I'm gonna sign in again there. Excuse me while I, I time myself out, sorry for that. knew that was going to happen. I was going to run into a timeout sooner or later. 
There it is. Okay, now when you click on the Learn module, you'll notice this is the first page of the Learn module. Well, this is actually not the original first page of the Learn module. This is the one that I created. And I did it right here. You'll see right up here at the top where it says objectives, determine the probability of the normal curve using the Z-score. I did not like that as the objective because we are going to get away from using Z-scores completely thanks to the advent of calculators that do it, all of our calculations bypassing completely the Z-score. Uh, although I still teach Z-scores this for this semester, I'm not wanting to you have them waste their time trying to learn how to use them. So I wanted to edit this screen. So I wanted to replace the screen up here in the upper right hand corner. I click check replace screen and I come down here in to an edit box, a rich edit box, very similar to what we have with uh, Canvas. And so we can use what I did was I entered in uh, a note that uh, with the advent of the TI-84, it's no longer necessary to use the Z-score. And then I included some videos here because I wanted to just show how to go about doing that. Now, alternatively, we could have, rather than replace the screen with the information down here, we could have hidden the screen. And so when I hide the screen, and this is something I always forget to do. I'm surprised I remember right now, but as soon as you make a change here, you have to save the changes and it will affect everybody that uses that curriculum. So yes, that's what I wanna do. So just to show you what hiding the screen does, when I go back over here and I have to exit that learn again, because it has to update. But now when I click on learn, that page no longer exists. So I was able to remove that and in fact, there are several um, section, uh, lessons where I have actually removed pages because it clutters up the students uh, thinking when they're trying to, to learn what it is I want them to learn. So I remove the extraneous material from the, from the lesson. Uh, so you can do that with, by hiding the screen uh, or you can replace the screen. So in when you're, let me go back to replace the screen. And I want to go down here and edit this a little bit. It is as simple as if you want to create a link to a video and I've got a, or, or to a web page, for example, here is a web page that I have that I, let's say I want to include this web page as a, uh, a link to enable the students to uh, refer to this because it, expands on the ability of, of using the normal curve. So I would go to my lesson and I would say something like um, view this web page to uh, learn how to use Excel to create distribution curve. I can highlight that and click on the link there. And I want to get that URL. So I will copy the URL from that web page, copy it and go over here and paste that URL into the link creation box. And now I have a link here to use when I actually go into the lesson that will link me directly to that web page. Um, another thing that we can do, uh, we spent a lot of time, uh, I certainly did in the spring and, and uh, continuing to do so, created lesson videos uh, for the students because we were off site, right? And, and um, they still needed to have the lectures. So I have here an example of a lecture that I had created on the empirical rule uh, that we're talking about. And uh, I want to be able to embed, embed that. Now it's in stream right now. And I don't know that we have the solution as to what's gonna happen. I understand stream is gonna go away, um, but 
until then, uh, we've got this ability to incorporate stream videos into our um, uh, lesson plan, our lessons. So we are going to do that using the share button, which I'm sure you've done before, but we click on share and we want to embed the videos. Uh, I do the same sort of thing, uh, exactly the same way in Canvas, but now I can do this directly into the Hawks lesson and it will be a seamless lesson in that way. So they don't have to look at a video in Canvas and then jump into um, Hawks to try to follow along with the, the lesson. So I copy the embed code, close it, go back to my lesson over here. And now I need to click on source. I want the source code. And I'm going to right here, just pick a place within the source for the page and hit control V and that paste that embed code into the edit box. So now I'm going to save my changes. Yes, I know that, okay. And I'll go back just to confirm in my student module that in fact it got picked up. And you can see here that it indeed it did get picked up and put in right where I had put it. I'd already put one in there, so I've actually duplicated it for purposes of the lesson right now, but this actually did go right where I put it inside that uh, uh, code source, source code box um, that we saw earlier. So you can also incorporate YouTube videos. Um, if you have a, a YouTube video that you um, particularly fond of, and it's as simple as just copying the link and get back out of the source code here. And I will come down here and I will create a link. I'll just paste it and create the link. Where it is? I forgot to do it. There we go. And now I've got a link to that YouTube video, which I could also have some kind of a lead in statement about it uh, to clarify what I wanted them to get out of that video. Again, I need to save the changes, accept the fact that it's going to change for everybody, and then go back and confirm that indeed that video link got incorporated. And there we go. So those are really the three things that I wanted to, actually this is going faster than I thought too, but um, it's really the three things I wanted to cover, which was how you can hide a screen, replace a screen, but also incorporate rich uh, information into what is really in many ways, a kind of a bland set of modules uh, that are a bit boring, but you can certainly spice those up and, uh, to give the students a better experience uh, with Hawks learning. So with that, I think what I'd like to do is open it up for questions and see if you've got any questions about uh, how to edit Hawks or if I went over something too fast. Could you maybe show us an example of a page that you would want to hide? I, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, sure. What, yeah, absolutely. What it is you find objectionable about the page or... Um, okay, um, let's see. Let me, the fastest way to do that is probably to go over here. Okay, so uh, let's see, what, where was that? Oh, okay, I, I, let me go to my latest lesson and I'll show, and I'll, I've got a good one for in the latest lesson that we had. which is estimating population means. So I click on my lecture, my YouTube lecture, and I'm, so these are calculating margins of error, but what they do is they have a good lead in for it, but then when they start talking about how to do the calculations, 
they where was it here's where they start using z values for example and this discussion is okay right here but the students don't need to know how to use the tables and let's see where uh, yeah see these tables down here look well, too fast these tables they don't need to be able to use those because their um, calculator will take care of that for them so if i go into let's go back here to close that go to my dashboard and we're in 8.1 for example Again, I go to open learn and I go to the page that I want to adjust. Where'd that table go? <laughs> Here we are. Okay, so what I can do is I can actually copy this whole page, mm -hmm. paste it down here below, oh. and and then go through here and delete this table. Yeah. Oops, I can delete. I, yeah, if I can get my. I can control my cursor a little bit better, I can. There we go. I can delete that, ta that table, for example, and I want to replace the screen. So I save those changes. Now I've not done anything to the above. See, the table is still there above. So if I ever wanted to bring it back, I can always go back and recreate it. But what the students would see then, save changes, yeah. Didn't remember if I did that. Okay, fine, fine. Let's go back to the lesson and go over here to, this is the student lesson. So let's exit that, start it again and get to that point where the table was located. I can remember which page that was on. Yeah, this is the page that the table was on and that mm -hmm. table is now gone. Now it's lost some of the formatting, but we can adjust that as well um, in that edit box. Um, it didn't carry over the uh, the uh, formatting very well. I could also copy and paste those uh, graphs that were on that page, and I'd have to do that individually as well, but it's a bit more tedious that way, but I can eliminate information out of there. Or I could have eliminated the whole page and been just as good. So let me go back to my. So this is almost like customizing the textbook. It absolutely is because these learn modules come directly from the textbook. And okay. in fact, most of the time we're just quoting the textbook, but it, it gives us the ability to um, like, as I said before, some, some of these uh, um, processes in statistics are becoming archaic with the advent of calculators, which mm -hmm. we never used to have. Uh, when I was, maybe some of you, when you were taking, when I was taking statistics, um, the, uh, we were using slide rules and, and pencils and paper, and, and uh, it was pretty tedious. Um, but now with these calculators, you can just zip through these uh, statistics problems. So, and you said you could also customize the uh, certify the the homework that they do. It, yes, you certainly can. Right here um, in the lesson builder, you can pick which questions out of the question bank. But even more interesting is you can actually add questions to the question bank and uh, create your own and with your own uh, uh, solutions. And uh, 
It's kind of similar to the quizzes in um, Canvas, a little bit different, but you can actually do that here and then add them over here on the right mm -hmm. to the um, either the practice module or the certify module. So you get right here, practice and certify. So you could write a Reinhardt centric or a current Absolutely. a current event statistics question. Absolutely. Absolutely. And right now I uh, I just learned how to do this uh, a month or so ago. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, what I how I've been doing taking care of that uh, current events sort of thing is I have them do weekly articles on something about statistics that's pertinent. So uh, I, I give them a topic like this week, it was the weather and they have to come up with some kind of a weather statistic and uh, tell me how it could be an error, how it could be biased, how, um, and, and the operative word there is could be, I'm not saying they right. are, but how right. could it be biased? And, uh, and so I've had things about political polls and I've had uh, questions about the environment and all sorts of stuff. Very cool. Richard, so, I actually have a question for you, if you don't mind. Okay. I know Dr. Conlon has worked more with Hawks than I have in terms of integration with Canvas. And I just, um, I want to know more about how it integrates and what is the advantage of Hawks? And maybe you talked about this in the beginning. I know I came in a couple of minutes late, but how do instructors typically use it? And, and could you just walk me through a little bit about what Hawks is? Sure, absolutely. So Hawks is an online learning system that is a content full learning system as opposed to Canvas, which is a content free learning management system. So you have to bring the content into Canvas, whereas Hawks brings the content to you and it keeps track of grades. And it uh, and you can see here uh, on this one page that I'm on here where I'm editing the curriculum, uh, the different things that tweaks that you can make to the learning software to uh, and, and one tweak I made, for example, was I now require that uh, rather than being able to jump right to certify that students have to do 90% of the practice problems. And I do that because mathematics is a lot of muscle memory, especially on calculators that the more you do it, the easier it is to do. And so I require them to do 90% of the problems in the practice module, but you can do that sort of thing. Now, the way it inter interfaces with Canvas is really pretty cool, I think. Um, let me close this. And we'll go back over here to Canvas and I'll show you how I have done mine, I'm not saying this is the best necessarily, but of course you've got the announcements and all of that, but then I've also created modules. So I've got the usual, but I've put all of the videos that I use or that I've created or referred to, I've got a section on a module on videos. I've got the Hawks learning the, where you, this is where Hawks itself integrates directly with this through what they call their learning single sign-on, Hawks learning single sign-on. And uh, so basically you can just click on a homework assignment it'll, in Canvas and it will take you right to there. And then I've got my help modules, um, which are broken down by calculator and, and statistics help and Excel help and that sort of stuff. So if I go to, if I go to, if I'm going too fast, stop me. Assignments is really where I, I think I've spent most of my time. I have created for each day, whether the course is asynchronous or it's an in-class lecture. And I have assigned, well, pick, let's see, let's pick, uh, I don't know, let's pick uh, six, well, we were just in 6.1, so let's go to that one. And, I, and I've created inside Canvas these notes that address that particular day's homework. I've included a video uh, that I asked them to watch. Now this this is an asynchronous, or no, this is an in-class lecture. So I even have these videos for some of the in-class lectures. But if it were asynchronous, they have to watch those videos because I don't think that the 
learn module is gives them exactly what they need. And then here there is a link to the Hawks homework problem or a homework section. So here's 6.1 introduction to normal distribution. And I click on that link and it takes me right into the Hawks. So I can do my homework right here. Once I have certified in that, it is actually, Hawks actually keeps track of that. And every evening Canvas is updated and it goes right into the grades. I don't know how to hide the names, so bear with me. Uh, ignore the names, please. Uh, but you can see that each Hawks assignment, the, these are sections in the Hawks uh, learning module or certify modules that they have completed and they get graded on and they can, um, and it gets incorporated right into the grade book. Now, as it turns out this semester, I'm also doing all online exams. I'm gonna scroll over here. Here are my weekly articles also where I manually grade those. I actually grade those in Canvas and uh, it's recorded here in the Canvas grade book. Um, but these online tests, these are done in Hawks. And then what happens is the grade is passed back to Hawks. And then I go through and edit it for their, to give them extra credit for cheat sheets that uh, I have them produce. And um, if I have to curve the test for some reason, then I do that here. Let's so let's pretend that- It's actually pretty well, yeah, go ahead. Uh, let's pretend that I'm in new math adjunct and you are going to train me how to pair a Hawks curriculum with the Canvas course. How, what's the process of doing that? Well, that's a little bit more complicated. And I typically end up having to call technical support at okay. Hawks every semester. But it, it does, it, it is fairly straightforward, but that's primarily done through Hawks. And what happens is when you do your single sign on in that one Hawks module that I told you about, mentioned to you, mm -hmm. the Hawks learning module, when, when you do this sync tool the, for the first time, it will actually sync up because it knows it's starting here in Canvas. It will actually sync up directly with Hawks. But you have to go to Hawks to get the sync tool and get it put and tell it that you want it in your Canvas module. Okay. So is, is that an LTI that's installed through Canvas or is that, how's that work? Yeah, it's installed through Canvas. Well, both Canvas and Hawks working hand in hand. You actually have to go to Hawks to get the sync tool, but then you, I, I think maybe, see, it's been so long since I put that in there. Um, it may be something that you have to do as an LTI I, through the settings, maybe. I, I've forgotten actually now, Mason. I'd have yeah, to go back. It's usually settings and then apps, the app tab. Yeah. Okay, so that's. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I was. That's right. That's where that's where that came from. Okay. It came from here. Yeah, you scroll down. There's a Hawks. Yeah. Yeah. There, there we go. Is. Hawks learning. Whoop. No. What's going on? I don't. I'm not controlling in control of my cursor anymore. There we there go. It is. Hawks learning. Okay. So, what yeah. do you do when it's time to uh, start a new semester? Can do your Hawks courses that you've already created? Can you just copy them, or do you have to start afresh yeah. since you have to resync to a new curriculum? No, they they actually they actually will copy. In fact, the cu curriculum over as well, and I I start with that same curriculum to uh, to establish the dates and that sort of thing. I'll have to modify the dates a bit, but I actually am able to the system learns how, what I did the previous semesters and copies that over. So I don't have to uh, completely rebuild the, rebuild it from scratch. Okay. So you, you can actually copy the canvas course uh, with a, so you have a new semester, you go into your class when it's been created by the registrar in canvas you right. import your content from a previous Canvas course. And so it will remember that pairing? It, yes. Okay. 
So really, you yeah. just have to do it one time, and the next time you copy it over, you That's just right. have to adjust yeah, the dates. Just, yep, just adjust the dates. Primarily, just adjust the dates, and and uh, and you're pretty much good to go. Um, do you have to adjust the the dates in Hawks or just in Kansas? Yes. Adjust no, you have to adjust them. Actually, you have to adjust them in both, and that's okay. That's one of the more tedious. Uh, let's see if I can get to the top of this. Go home. One of one of the more tedious aspects of this is I have to create each one. Actually, Hawks will create each one of these mm -hmm. uh, lectures. In fact, here it is, right down here. This is what Hawks will do for you. They will okay. actually create these. Uh, linkages to the homework. So I could al also get to the homework from here in Canvas. But what I've done is I've taken these links and copied them into the daily lectures, which I've I've labeled by the day of the, the right. month um, that they're that it's due and wh where they're, they're going to be in class or not, uh, along with the title so that I can then use that the rich edit function of Hawks, I mean, of Canvas to say something more about the lesson and what I expect to see out of the lesson, what they should be getting out of the lesson. Um, so, but the more, this is the, one of the more tedious aspects of that is being able to create this separate list because you got for each day, you have to edit each day. Right. And that's a bit tedious at the start of the semester. And if you if you're coming in late, and you've only got two or three days before the start of the semester. This is something that's going to be slow to build, um, but you know you do your first week or two, and then that gives you time to over the weekend to to build the rest of the semester out. And can you share your curriculum customizations with other faculty members in Hawks? I, be I believe that's a, yes. Um, I think what we have to do. And uh, uh, you're challenging my learning that I took from you on Canvas here, actually, <laughs> Mason. But I think there is a way that we can save the, we export the course content mm -hmm. um, on the uh, Canvas side. Through yeah. the settings, we, we can export the course content and we can actually, I believe, save it also to Commons. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I haven't used Commons very much, but I think we could save it to Commons and somebody could go in there and, and, and get it out of Commons as well if we created it, if we saved it in the right fashion with the so right that's, accesses. That's the Canvas portion of it. What about the Hawks portion of it? So if you've customized things in Hawks, can you share those? Yes, I certainly can. And in fact, uh, that's how I got started. Uh, Elizabeth Smith had actually... Uh, See if I can show you a, an example of that. Um, I think I'm going to have to log back in for a second. If I go to my assignments and my curriculum, I can it, select any of the curriculums that have been saved and you can see here Elizabeth Smith Fall 2016. Well, mm -hmm. that was the first curriculum that I used. I just used that curriculum, copied it into mine, renamed it, and then started editing the curriculum. But it was 90% done because she had already created that. So this then allows us, and for this, for example, this Richard or Bloat Fall 2020 is now available to anybody within. Uh, Reinhardt okay. uh, that's teaching, teaching the class. And so they can use that. And, and, and in, that would include, by the way, the changes in the, in the learn modules that I've created because it affects everybody who uses my curriculum. Right. So. Excellent. So yeah, thanks. That brought that all the way around to where we started, which was editing the learn modules. I have a question about your video setup. Okay. Uh, you have some fantastic 
layouts that you can put in front of you and behind you. And I believe you have a you have a green screen back there. Yes, I do. All righty. Yep. Um, I've got. Uh, let's see here. I've got all kinds of different backgrounds. Um, so I ha have the green screen. So what I use is a software program called OBS, uh, OBS. OBS Studio. OBS. Yeah, it's uh, I think online broadcasting software. It's freeware um, and always go back to the original source to get it. Don't go, you know, don't get it from some third party because you might yeah. end up getting a virus or something into it. But this uh, is really powerful for being able to build scenes and then um, add different sources to them, including filters, which, uh, for example, I have uh, the, the green screen, the, the, uh, they call it a chroma key um, ability. And it can be a blue screen or a green screen. It doesn't matter. You, you, can, you can change that. And then along with that, I'm also using... Um, Oh, and it, it provides the scene, the scene transitions too. So I can cut from uh, one to another. Uh, I can cause it to fade in or out. Mm -hmm. um, and there are different transitions that you can make between the different scenes. Um, and of course, I'm getting anxious for... Christmas to be here. <laughs> so, fantastic. so, uh, so yeah, so it, it's, uh, it's really powerful. And then I use also a freeware program called DaVinci Re um, Resolve. And that uh, allows me to do a lot of special effects. Now I haven't done any mm -hmm. of them yet. Uh, using Resolve. My son has actually built a couple of them for me that are kind of cool. In fact, um, maybe I'll show you one. I have, oh, I'm, I'm sharing only that one screen, aren't I? I need to stop. I need to share my desktop so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, now you... Can you see my desktop now? And yes. This is the this is the OBS software. Okay. And this is where I can I can control the transition from the nuclear to the Santa Claus or whatever. And then I've got also I can find my um My son did this uh, with uh, Resolve. Okay. So. Good morning, children. <laughs> Young man caught him, wrote a poem about him in 1822, and it goes like this. Okay. So, very nice. Can we can we see your green screen? Like, can you turn off the chroma key so we can see what you have behind you? Sure. Um, is it a like a photographer's drape, like a muslin drape? Yes, it is. And um, let's see, I can do this. Um, see well that didn't do very much let's see here if i can how can i i guess what i should do is just go to change that to okay i'm going to add the Video capture. Okay. 
Maybe okay, let's see what this it. does. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Got to remove that filter from that. Yes, remove that. Okay, uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, transition. So, did you add any backlighting to the to the green screen, or is it? Yeah. Uh, yes, I have actually here. In fact, I'll uh, I'll take my webcam. Okay. I don't strangle myself on my mic cord. I'll try to show you. Oh yeah. So okay. I've got on the left, on the right, mm -hmm. then I've got a, a third one that I use to for shining on the the uh, green screen. Mm -hmm. This little light right here. So. To, the lighting yeah so those umbrella lights are for you not just for the green screen right okay. yeah, right they're they're primarily to because it would get uh, my overhead light in here is too yellow mm -hmm. and uh these are i think six thousand whatever that is the measurement on the light the kelvin yeah kelvin that's okay. six thousand degrees kelvin well, cool. Um, so I don't want to dominate your time here. It is 345. Are there other questions? By the way, this is my computer over here. Well, that's can, really I can't cool. see it very well. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for showing us all of that. <laughs> that was super fun. Yeah. So do you, yeah. are, are you Santa in disguise? No. Well, yes, I'm Santa in disguise. I am Santa. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> in fact, uh, in fact, we've uh, Santa will appear at uh, Fellaini this year on two different days for the kids. So, yes, I heard that. That's exciting news. So yeah, so it's a happening thing. I think. Okay. Other cool. Thanks for thanks for coming and talking. I, I I don't know a lot about the Hawk system. Period. So it was great to actually get to see it and and see some of what it what its capabilities are. And, and Hawks really really is good. They, and if they've got a course, I mean, we've got we're using pre -calc, calculus, uh, algebra. The, they're, those courses are all on Hawks right now, and they've actually got some physics classes and some others. I don't know I don't know what else they've got on there, but they've got a pretty robust. Uh, set up that's awesome do you know if they have any biology courses on there you know keith that's what exactly what i was trying to think um i, I was trying to think of what that might be and um let, let, in fact if you, if you give me just a second i can probably find out real quick because i can go to hawks if i can get to the, there it is go to my dashboard um, let's see, I think it was to help. Okay, so they've got English, psychology, math and algebra, algebra, calculus, advanced math, statistics, of course liberal arts and additional math economics no that did not they do not appear to have biology in their listing of materials well, i didn't know they also had english yeah that's interesting it's, yeah it's okay that they don't have biology because knowing uh, i did I, I thought it was just a math thing so knowing that they have like psychology english and yeah uh, economics that's that's fantastic those are great that would be great resource tools for for some of our faculty here yeah, especially yeah, I would developing think so. an online course. Yeah. Exactly. Tammy, I'm sorry. I just saw you come on. Uh, have you got any questions for us? Looks like she doesn't have her audio connected. Tammy, we did record this, yeah. so I'll uh, send out an announcement uh, when the recording is available and make sure there is a link with that. We'll do that in streams. Thank you so much, everyone. 
Yes, thank you, Richard. Thank you for coming, Lydia. You too, Keith. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jamie. And uh, we'll. Mason, uh, thanks for hosting. Sure thing. We'll look forward to seeing everybody again in our next happy hour. So thank you all. And like I said, we did record this and we'll post the recording uh, via stream and have that ready probably by the beginning of next week. All right. Goodbye, Great. everybody. Thank, thank you, Richard. Thank have you. A great weekend. All thank right. you very much. You bet. And as host, you, you get to end this meeting, Richard. <laughs>